Okay, well, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Yoda's Hut. I'm Bill. I go by Yoda Man on the Boards, and I'm joined once again by Derek. How's it going today, Derek? Doing pretty good. All right, so this is a, another game where Jerry and I were playing uh, community-suggested decks here. Um, I am on the right playing a deck suggested by Trip and Rocket from the Boards, which is a very intriguing deck list. When I saw it, it made me want to try it. Um, it's Scum Affiliation with two masterful manipulations, two out of the mists, two defense protocol, two admirals assault, and two endor entrapment. And uh, Jerry on the left here is playing a smuggler's deck, which is a slight variation of something suggested by Pants YG from the boards. Um, his deck was two beyond the rim, two asteroid sanctuary, one that bucket of bolts, uh, one against all odds, one along the gamma run, one gardener's secret, one renegade squadron mobilization, and one secret weapon. So a lot of one ofs in the deck, plus the, the two falcons and the two beyond the rim. So uh, any initial thoughts on the, the decks we're getting ready to see in this matchup here, Derek? Uh, well, the light side one, I'm kind of curious to see how what it does, because I, I haven't built a deck yet or with that new uh, uh, pod. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. it was the oh, first Beyond one the Red. Yeah, Beyond the Red. Yeah, yeah, so I've been wanting to get and use that, and I haven't done it yet. So I'm kind of curious to see how that works. And then uh, the other deck is just seems like it's out of left field. I'm really curious to see what that one's going to do as well. <laughs> yeah, and looks like I already flipped up my objectives there, and I started with... Um, Admiral's Assault, Defense Protocol, and Masterful Manipulation. So, hmm. um, And Jerry is slipping up objectives. He's got Asteroid Sanctuary, looks like Gardener's Secret, and Renegade Squadron Mobilization there. So um, so with my objectives, Masterful, you get to, you can bury it or shuffle it back into your deck at the end of your opponent's turn and pull out a new objective. Defense Protocol is that old core TIE Fighter set that you can choose your reserve, reduce your reserve value by one before your draw phase to do a damage to a unit. And uh, Admiral's Assault like lets you take fate cards back when it enters play, which didn't really do me much good here. Um, yeah, you like must a, have needed that fleet resource if you kept that one at the start. Yeah, I, I think I might have had both of them or something. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so I had sort of stuck playing one. Um uh -huh. And then it looks like I'm playing a control room and one of the cruisers, or cruisers, since it's spelled wrong, <laughs> there. So uh, so that thing costs four. It's got two guns, uh, white tactics. And then uh, its ability is you can basically uh, pull something into an engagement that's ready when it attacks. And then I'm just playing a cheap old little TIE fighter for one. Just got the black blast and the black uh, gun there. Or sorry, the white blast and white gun. Yeah, that, that big ship there, uh, I kind of underestimated it at first. I didn't think it was that great um, compared to the gladiators that are in the pod that are so mm -hmm. amazing. But uh, at the right time, it can be useful to get a certain unit off the table that you, where you don't have something like the Sith direct kill cards to get you know a unit actually into combat that they might not defend with otherwise yeah exactly so um so i did just commit the tie fighter and took balance back which i didn't even need to commit the tie fighter because uh jerry has gardener's secret out what that does is each enhancement contributes one force icon to the force struggle for both sides so i could have just taken balance back with the control room but i was probably figuring his deck was enhancement heavy so i might as well at least try to get two on the force see what happens mm -hmm. Um, and then the the third one he's got out there is that the uh, the Echo Caverns look. Yeah, that's Renegade Squadron Mobilization, okay. which I think is if a enemy unit leaves play, you get to draw a card. Right. So and then Asteroid Sanctuary, if you win an edge value, you draw a card. So he's got a couple mechanics to help keep his hands up, you know, hand size up in this game. And uh, there's no a, such thing as too much card draw. Right, and he played uh, Cloud City Guest Quarters there, so the two resources, and now he's going to play. It looks like Echo Caverns, so that Echo Caverns isn't limited, so you can play both the Cloud City Guest Quarters and that, and that lets you steal the an icon from a unit that shares a trait with something else and kind of move it. And very good car that I think is coming back thanks to Gardner's Secret. <laughs> yeah, it's very versatile. 
um, for not only for your units, but for just taking something off of uh, someone that's attacking so they don't right. get it and then uh, he, to strike against you. So yeah, and then He played the Aetherian Junk Dealer, which let him take force thanks to Gardner Seek after he committed it. I mm -hmm. buried or shuffled Masterful Manipulation back in my deck. <laughs> and that lets you draw a card, too, when you do it. So I got an extra, I think I made sure I did the card draw. It's yeah. always great when you can do that because you can use the two resources and then just put it back in and kind of. I always it. forget that extra card draw. Yeah, and I flipped up out of the miss, and I think that's the one that if you the new Zuckus, if you win a edge battle by double your opponent's force icons, you can bring a unit or scum unit that costs three or less from discard into play. <laughs> so, so mm -hmm. I think it's what that does. Yeah, the, those type of locations and uh, things they they don't even if you don't get to trigger them, uh, the threat is out there. So your opponent can't really you know block something and and then put one pip in the edge and let you win it because there's the risk of uh, something nasty happening is definitely there. They either got to commit to an edge battle or just let you pass by unopposed. All right, so I played uh, the CD Cantina. And then I played a debt collector to get another resource out, and then I played one of the black side headhunters. So I definitely got some resources out. So I like that aspect of this deck that <laughs> mm -hmm. either I've lucked into the resources or it just has a decent amount. So well, there's not any in defense protocol, right? And there isn't uh, any in admiral's assault either, right? Um, but, so but you, you do have a masterful and Zuckus and uh, Endor entrapment. So that's not bad. Uh, the control room, is that in Indoor Entrapment? Yep, yeah, that's in Indoor okay. Entrapment. So it looks like I'm going to go ahead and swing with the cruiser and force him to have to defend with the junk dealer, and I'll be able to kill that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely good, especially with hidden our uh, Gardner's Secret out there. Yeah. Uh, you don't want him uh, pulling back enhancements and stuff. Uh, I know he doesn't have that proximity mine in, in this version of the deck, but... It's, Still, that's uh, you don't want to worry about anything that could potentially bounce back, even if he just discards it to an edge battle. Right. So, so I did attack. I'm engaging Gardner's secret, probably trying to see if I can get that rid of that thing, just so I don't have to worry about the enhancements keeping the force for Jerry here. I'm yeah, probably almost, not even. I almost would send something else at the. Uh... Or uh, attack something else first, and then send the the uh, headhunter gardener's secret. That's oddly, uh, I think, would be the one you would want to blow up the most because yeah. you don't have anything like Palpatine in your deck that has five pips to commit to the force. Right. So, uh, so, so we both passed edge. So he won the edge battle. He drew a card, but I'm gonna, I'll take a damage on the cruiser. But thanks to my two guns, I'll kill the junk yeah. dealer. And then, so I've got. Uh, Three on the force right now to his two, so I'll take balance back with the dial at two here. So I see you didn't attack with the headhunter then. Now, uh, a lot of times, I I know it's probably maybe not necessarily the right play because you want to be aggressive with those headhunters there, but um, a lot yeah. of times out the first turn or two, I get them out. I keep them for defense and try to make use of their shield if I have to try to help protect an objective. Yeah, I mean, or that's I really not, like that's not terrible, but yeah. you got to pay for him every turn. If you've got right. an objective that needs, uh, like loses its ability when it gets damaged, I can see that. But I, uh, I think you're better off uh, swinging most of the time with those guys, unless you absolutely have to keep them. Yeah. Games. Well, and two, if I if I would have done it the other way, then I would have sort of been stuck that, unless I send them both in, I would have only had one defender too. Yeah, you weren't going to get, uh, like I said, I would have just left the TIE Fighter, and uh, if he attacks, you know, so be it. You, he's, you're going to do three damage to his location. He's probably not going to do more than that to you. Yeah, I guess, you um, hope not, but he did have a lot of resources since he got that sure. class 8 guest quarters, and he got Echo Cavern, so it was kind of, <laughs> I didn't want to get yeah. locked down either, so it's kind of like a... a I said a tough decision. Yeah. Like, early game, I try not to get too too aggressive, just because well, I always and, worry and, it might come out. 
And also, too, if he uh, does play something and then comes and attacks, that limits what he's got for defense, and you've got the head earner to potentially swing again. Yeah. So if you've got that Gardener's Secret with three damage on it already, he might not want to be less inclined to attack with the head hunter still on the board. Yeah. So it, it depends on your play style, really. I know you're, you are you play more defensive than I do. I tend to play aggressively, which <laughs> works sometimes and costs me another time. Yeah, well, sometimes <laughs> playing too conservatively can cost you too, as I found out. So, <laughs> But this was definitely it. I mean, I think I wanted to get rid of that junk dealer because yeah, of the is, very I reason you said. You, you yeah. don't want them to start pitching stuff and bringing it back. Um, and we had... I think before we played this game, we had we had both played some decks probably that use that card, so we kind of realized how annoying it can be with Gardner's Secret out. So yeah, I remember previous games that you you posted and uh, where you were recycling the proximity mine with him. Right, <laughs> right, of, right. It's it's just disgusting. And right. then uh, having the Gardner's Secret, I think in that same game you had like five on the force just from enhancements. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so I mean, I've only got a couple this time, but um, it's early. <laughs> yeah, it's it's early. It's early. I said I've got you know defense protocol could come in handy if I don't mind taking one less card in my hand if he's got something out there I want to get rid of. Now, I'm probably thinking, too, like like we said about trying to be a little more defensive here. You know, he's got enough resources out. He could potentially play a Falcon. And if he plays a Falcon with Echo Caverns, he could steal a Tactics from the Cruiser if he needed, if he want Edge. So I was probably kind of thinking the worst-case scenario, so I was trying to avoid getting like lockdown or just, you know. <laughs> yeah, once you see Falcon, I mean, that changes the game a bit. But you, right. it's, uh, yeah, you almost, I mean, there's two in his deck at most. You know, sometimes it's just playing the odds. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. you have it this exact turn before you get to play other stuff. Right. You know? Well, if I remember right, his deck list has one of the newer Falcon too, so. Right. Even though he couldn't bounce it and put another card in, he still could steal like some icons with that since I got the ships out. Sure. So, um, all right. So it looks like he's, I think he stepped away for a second for some reason. I guess he's trying to figure out what he wants to do here. Probably get more enhancements. Yep. There's, uh, <laughs> I think that's the smuggler's hideaway card, uh, that's in beyond the rim. That's nice because it's a smuggler affiliated resource and it's also not limited. So that means you can play that and another limited card if you want to. I okay. think the only drawback is you can't really play that set, or at least it's risky to play that set with uh, a multi-affiliation deck because it has the right, text that yeah. if a Jedi or Rebel objectives out, then it leaves play. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically it. a standard resource, um, but the, that small slight drawback is on it, but then it's not limited. So I, right. I think that's definitely a fair trade. Yeah, and I love resources that match an affiliation because, I mean, you, know, you always want resources, and neutral ones can be nice or certainly good too. But if you can get one that matches an affiliation with certain events or things, it can just be so much more useful, <laughs> like yeah. having to play stuff out. If you got bamboozle or something like that that you want to use, then you can mm -hmm. use that card and... So, I say, and the fact that you actually could play both of those and another resource in the same turn since they're not limited. Well, theoretically, those three he's got out now, he could have played them all on one turn. Yep, there we go. Only the clouds thing was off, was uh, limited. Yeah, so there we got Falcon, and that's the newest Falcon there, the one that it has Edge One. It's Elite. It's got the same basic icons of the two black guns, two black blast, and one white gun. And then he played is that the navigation droid. So he, he actually decided not to use Echo Cavern or save Echo Cavern's resource to, for shenanigans. But now the other thing that Falcon can do is he can just remove it from combat, right? Right. Yeah. Once per turn, you can remove it from combat either you know before or an edge battle. You know, you can do it basically whenever. So right. you know, he's going to try to play the slow game here, just commit the Falcon and the navigation droid and take balance back. So the dial's going to go to three. And now you're probably right. I probably should have been more aggressive. <laughs> Because now you're going to have to pay for the headhunter to right. keep him around and not strike with him, and that's one less resource every turn you do yeah. it. 
So and again, it looks like I chose not to use the uh, now, defense Now, what protocol. does the, na the navigation droid do? I don't. Oh, so the navigation droid. I think he just has like one uh, white gun. But, yeah, I can see that. That's but um, awesome. he uh, he protects smuggler vehicles. That's right. He's the protector. Right. So, and there's quite a few smuggler vehicles in this deck. <laughs> Yeah. And so I'm playing a gladiator for three. I did pay the to keep the head on her. So the gladiators are always so good since they've got edge one. They've got that ability that after edge stacks are revealed, you can put any edge card in other than twist of fate. So that means you can even put things like seeds of decay, imperial fist. You, you know, mm -hmm. once you know you're not getting twisted, you can put something in. And there is a tie attack squadron. There's a blast from the past. <laughs> so that could come in very handy yeah i mean that that card's you know a little pricey but considering what it can do it's really good it's got the the black gun the black blast the white blast and if you if it's in an engagement and you play an edge card then it gains targeted strike and an extra black gun yeah, so, a fake card when you, if you right play yeah it. sorry a fake card yeah. yeah in an edge battle and it doesn't even matter if it gets twisted away or if you use a twist just to do it it activates it so now the uh, the ship you got in the first turn that's got a damage on it. He has three health, right? Not two. Yes, that's correct. It has three health. Okay. The gladiator only has two. The tax tax quadrant also only has two. Yeah, see, now would be a good time to see, send him. You need to get rid of that protector. Right. Right. Uh, pull that sucker in there and and take him out. And you've got a tactics also. Uh, he might have to block with both. Uh, if you do that, just. To, to take care of that and then you've got uh an open board again plus you've got some tactics out there you could potentially uh i don't do you have one other tactic or just the one um, i can see the gladiator but right that well the cruiser the cruiser has a white tactics too okay so i've got two potential white tactics and because of how jerry played out his board he didn't save echo caverns to right. use it to steal at least uh, to steal an icon, so he can't turn off my tactics other than by winning edge. So yeah, if you, I mean, you eliminate the protector, but you really, if you can do two damage to the Falcon, you can eliminate it with defense protocol next turn. Yeah, or it might even be able to swing in with the tie attack squadron. So I, I kind right. of wonder if I'll force him to bring Falcon in here. Of course, the one drawback is he could bounce Falcon out. <laughs> With Falcon's ability, so right. Well, he's got the protector anyway, right. so that's that's why I was saying you got to get kill the protector first. Yeah. So, so it looks um, like I'm... If you, yeah, yeah. If you can take it out, um, and then send the tie attack squad and, and get its targeted strike and hit Falcon for two, then you can uh, use the defense protocol. Yeah. See, I'm a little surprised Jerry didn't put Falcon in here, even though he wouldn't have to, just because. He could put it in, and then he'd have edge one just like me, so there'd be a right. wash there. And he could just move it out after the edge battle. So Yeah, and both your guys in there have tactics. It's not like right. he can add it to the battle uh, right. later if he loses this edge. Right. So you can very easily put two tactics on uh, Falcon right here if you had to. Right. Um, but the point is you could lock it down and, uh, then the entire attack squad could theoretically do two damage to it. Yeah. And I, I think I saw a, a seeds of decay in my hand, which is from Piet set. Actually, I always yeah. kind of forget that Piet has the seeds and Navy. Um, mm -hmm. and so if I can win an edge battle here, I gotta be a little careful because if I put it in now, he might twist it away. <laughs> so it's almost like if I want to. He's, oh, maybe he is going to block with Falcon to put the edge back. Yeah. Okay. Now, he only has uh, one twist in his deck then, right? From Because uh, he only has one of the, the other Falcon? No, he has two of the original Falcon and one of the okay. new Falcon. So he's got two. He's got a couple of them. Yeah. I don't know if I realized that was what was in his deck at this point. But I know he's got at least one. Because so, I see well, yeah. Sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably... Oh, I played a twist. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, he had thrown a bamboozle in there. Yeah. So I'm probably trying to be real careful about the seeds that I want to try to, if I do anything, I want to throw it in with the gladiator's reaction so I can avoid the twist. Yeah, if you have to. And even better would be to save it and use it with the tie attack. Right. 
And he might be worried a little bit about CD Cantina here too, because <laughs> you know with the stuff of winning by more double. So he didn't put anything in, which I technically won by more than went double there. I wonder if I forgot right. that. Right. Yeah. Because we would have it would have been three to one because of the yeah. Falcon and the Gladiator. So I seeds Falcon. Although I don't think you have anything in your discard pile you could pull out right Yeah, now. that might have been true. Maybe you didn't have to worry about it. So he's moving Falcon out of the way, not surprisingly, so I can't shoot at it. Yeah. Um, but now you can actually kill that guy and throw three tactics on yep. the Falcon. Yeah, so I'm going to kill the droid, thanks to the two guns on the cruiser, tactics Falcon. <laughs> throw another tactics on Falcon, get a damage on the objective plus the unopposed here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wonder if I will send in the TIE Attack Squadron after one of the other things and then get two damage on that Falcon, too. Well, the thing is now, too, if you put the TIE Attack with the Head Hunter, you got enough to completely take out a location. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not doing that. Huh. Well, I can sort of see why, except I'm, it's a little risky if he gets, like, a Class of the Operative here. Yeah, he did just pitch a bamboozle on the edge, so that's yeah. one less in, in the deck. But, right. uh, yeah, Cloud Cities are still there. Right, right. Yeah, because I could have just... Well, maybe I didn't have any more fake cards to actually use with TIE Attack Squadron to... Yeah, well, three, even then you could have sent each of them at the other locations and put three damage on each one. Right. Yeah, and I would have still had the deck collector and the TIE Fighter mm. to send with. Yeah. And actually, the one good thing about that Falcon being out there and being tactics down is now he can't play the other Falcon. That's right. So I think that was probably that was probably one of the reasons I did that too. I was probably thinking of the Falcon. This is the the better one to have on the board because he can't put units in with it at least. Right. So I think he's looking to see what do I still have. <laughs> He's got a lot of resources, though. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of resources. Uh, so that Gardner Secret is still doing. I mean, that's yeah. granted you're getting two force on it, but he, he's getting four. Yeah, so he uh, put another Smuggler's Hideaway out. So he's got yet another resource here. Yeah, you can play pretty much any, anything. He's got. I don't think there's anything super expensive in there besides the Falcon. So. Right, right. I mean, he's got eight resources, seven if he wants to keep up the Echo Caverns open, which I would think you want to. Yeah, he can easily drop a couple units. I'm a little surprised he didn't do that last time. I mean, he could have played Falcon and um, left that open last time. I mean, he would have had to double focus Cloud City Guest Quarters, but that really wouldn't have been that bad. Yeah, I think he just wanted the protector. Yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> which isn't terrible, um, especially with you knowing that you can bring in, force the Falcon into the the fight with that one dude. Right, right, that's uh, true. So that, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But I think then, he still could have done that because he didn't <clears throat> double focus the Cloud City guest quarters. That's what I meant. Yeah. If he had just double focused it, he could have still had the Echo Caverns available and the protector on the board. Right, right. So he would have just been one resource. You know, he wouldn't have that resource this turn. But Yeah, I mean, it's always kind of nice to have that protector out there, but I yeah. think it, it probably would have been better just to, to have the Echoes available. Yeah. Well, I said, I think he should have just double-focused Cloud City Guest Quarters instead of single-focusing it. He would have had both. He just would, especially because... Yeah. Um. There is Dash, okay. He's got so many uh, resources, too, so... Well, yeah, that, and if you're not playing the original Falcon that can bounce, it's not a big deal if you don't have as many resources on your turn, because you're not trying to make sure you have five and then potentially something else to put the Falcon back in again. So yeah. he's got Dash, and it looks like he's playing Pilot Han as a dude on foot. <laughs> <laughs> So he's got a. So I guess that hot. I can't. Even, I don't think he's elite, but he's got the two black guns, the black uh, tactics, yeah, the white. All his uh, extra stuff is when he's a pilot. He doesn't have anything beyond yeah, that. Yeah. So he's gonna commit dash and. 
Take yeah, because that, that gives him seven to the force. Yeah. I guess maybe he was just trying to get out of the hand. He's got the extra black tactics there. Well, you got all three of your force cards out there now, so he's only you got two, and he's got the force right now. Right. So. Now right. is where that gardener secret is becoming a problem. Yeah, and well, I got another uh, control room. Yeah. I guess the dial is at four now. Yeah, I think it's one of the first times you guys actually put the dial where I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I just played the resource, probably trying to figure out what I can do here. Dash could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as you always got blockers, you can always kind of pitch your hand. Yeah. Um, There's another gladiator. <laughs> <coughs> and he used his, yes, he, he used his Echo Caverns again to get both those guys. Yeah. Out. Well, that time he, at least when he did it, he did double focus the class that he guessed for, so he didn't really yeah. have much of a choice. So, yeah, but it's one thing, one less thing you got to worry about this turn. Yep. So, and you can pull in guys with that one, so you can really, I mean, you've, you've got so many units, you should be able to at least get rid of one of those guys, one way or the other. Right, the, and then hopefully get the force back here. <laughs> yeah. I'd really like to get rid of Gardner's secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that Han has three health, right? He's not like the core one. Yeah, he has three health. Yeah. Which is kind of funny, really, like since he's usually better off as the pilot. Yeah. It looked like I passed turn, and he just put one on defense protocol, so... Hmm. I guess I didn't want to attack into his two black tactics here. Well, either that or you just had a terrible edge hand. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't look too bad. I see that... That event from the out of the mist set that I never use, but I know it's got three pips. <laughs> I think it's actually similar to what Echo Caverns does, if I remember right. Oh yeah, I think it lets you uh, switch units that are in the engagement. They sure yeah, trait. like like two yeah, but again, you got to win by double. Right, right. Uh, to do that, and the fact that it's a three pip card, you just tend to pitch it in the in the battle anyway yeah. instead. Now uh, there's another junk dealer. So, he's got a bunch of resources still open, including Echo Caverns. <laughs> yeah. And he's got three mains. Yep. He sure does. And Falcon can bounce in and out. Mm -hmm. You've got, I mean, you've got a lot of units on the board, but I, I kind of feel like he's got... He's got like better, better units. State. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. got better units. <laughs> Yeah, as much as you like those gladiators and stuff, um, this is starting to go downhill, I think. Yeah. Now, the one thing I do have, I guess, that could help me a little bit here is I've got the um, the headhunter still. So I've got a shield. So if, depending on what he does, I wouldn't surprise me if um, if he attacks... I might try to defend with like both gladiators and or maybe one gladiator and the other ship. I, I don't know. I mean, it seemed like I'd probably try to defend with the gladiators, get the edge and maybe the uh, the headhunter to put a shield. Because then if I went edge, I might be able to get off two tactics before he could lock something down. So trying to look ahead there because... Because he's got those two black tactics, but if I can get a sh shield on one of the things with my white tactics, and then also win an edge battle, then I can use yeah. the unshielded thing with tactics, and then he can't lock down the other thing that has tactics. So that's probably what I'm trying to set up with my little bit of defensive play here. <laughs> well, the problem is, though, the gladiators only have two health, so whoever he swings with, like if it's Han, sends his two guns, and then his tactics, I mean, you've got to, the shield can only block one of those. If it blocks the tactics, right. and the guns kill him. Right, yeah, that's true. I really can't do anything about that if he is attacking with Han and Falcon. Yeah. But then he's only got, well, I was going to say he only has one tactics, but he can steal the tactics with the stupid right. Echo Caverns here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Echo Caverns just complicates things so much when you're trying to figure out the right order to strike and just <laughs> what yeah. to do. Another seeds would be nice right now. <laughs> yeah. Be nice to have Piet with seeds on him. Yeah, sure would. <laughs> <laughs> I never get seem to draw Piet when I actually play his set. Seems like I, I think never the get very him. first time I ever used him, I had him with like it was in a, a you know a, a Hoth heavy deck, and I had him with like Seeds, Echoes, and Battle of Hoth all attached <laughs> to him. And then since then, I don't think I ever got him anything valuable on him uh, ever again. <laughs> yeah, I had that happen to me in a, the store championship this year against me that uh, in the the one game I played that was just awful the way I would like have this dead draw at the beginning but uh he uh my opponent had piet and by the end he had piet with about 11 force pips on him yeah. <laughs> when he was attacking it's like there's there was just nothing i could do i had somebody use him with imperial fist and that was pretty nasty yeah yeah he had a fist on him he had like battle hoss seeds and heats and it was so just the, it was brutal the biggest problem with piet though is he's not elite Right, right. So if all it takes is one tactics and you you keep him locked down forever. Yeah, so. I just wasn't able to do that that game. He had he had a deck that Zizor in it too, and he had stuff with shields, so he kept kind of getting shields on Piet to make it make it harder to do that. And now yeah. he also had Madi. So we had, had so it looks like he did send Hand and Falcon, and I'm defending with both Black Gladiators and the uh, Black Sun Headhunter, and I shielded the objective. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. So and he, did somebody twist away something? Yeah, like he that? twisted that first edge battle. Okay. So one twist gone. And there's a second twist. I had a princess scheme that time. That wouldn't have really matter. I don't have any unique no. scum units here. And going again. So this is his third card. He's all in now, I think. Yeah, well, and you I, can still add two with right. the uh, gladiators if you need it. Yeah, so he's got... Five, six total with Falcon's Edge bonus. I've got four with the Gladiator, so I, I think I got enough. I could win this Edge battle pitching that last card in. Yeah, you would need uh, three more. Or no, you're defending. Yeah. You only need two more. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in. <clears throat> yeah. I won't get to use. I think that must be Quick Hunt, but I won't get to use that because I didn't win by double. <laughs> no, not with him pitching five. It's not not happening. Right. So now I guess it's just a matter of what am I going to shoot with here and is he going to bounce Falcon out? Is he going to use Echo Caverns? <laughs> when is he going to use Echo Caverns? About the only good thing here is I know he doesn't have any other cards to play. <laughs> so. Yeah, hopefully you can get a counterattack. That'll be useful. Um <laughs> Yeah, I might actually, this is interesting, I might focus Dash. <laughs> well, to... he, he can get two, if you let Han swing, it's going to be two tactics coming your way. Right, right. Um, well, I, I'm probably figuring he's going to get two tactics coming my way, no matter what, because I don't have another way to lock down Dash now. <laughs> With what I have on the board, I guess right. I do but have the yeah. dash. Isn't in this combat, is he? No, but I guess I meant he could attack with dash after this, and I might yeah. Not have but a way you to have the dash. edge advantage though at this point, yeah, because he's out of cards. Right, so but I, I don't think I can kill him with what I have. Yeah, but I don't know that he would want to attack because uh, you can block and just do damage and then kill him with defense protocol. Yeah. So I think, so, we're, yeah, my guess is we're, um, we're waiting here. Jerry's probably deciding, does he want to use Echo Cavern Jet? I mean, I'm going to get a tactics off no matter what he does. So it's just a matter of how does he want to do it? So it looks like he's taking a tactics and maybe moving it to Falcon. Yeah. And then he's moving Falcon out. <laughs> Well, that complicates things. Huh. Okay. So, I'm going to shoot with the gladiator. And I'm going to hit Han for one. 
So you're going to kill Han either way now, so... Eh, um, maybe not. If he chooses to tactics one of my ships and I can't kill Han this turn, I could get him with defense protocol, but... And I did tactics Falcon, so... No, the gladiators only have one gun, or they have two? Yeah, they only have one gun, so he okay, just... Okay, I was thinking they had two apiece. Yeah, so he killed one of the gladiators, the one I didn't strike with. Yeah. And now he's got a tactic still with Han. Jerry, no, and Jerry will probably. I say he might focus that cruiser because that's the thing I could get tactics with. Yeah. If I if he chose to do another attack. Well, and it has two guns also. Yeah. But two isn't enough to take out Dash. That's a problem. Oh, he double focused the Gladiator. Okay, that's probably an interesting play. Keep it locked down. So I get to shoot Han for one with the ship, and he didn't actually end up getting any damage on the objective because of that. Yeah, I know two is not enough to kill Dash, but then defense protocol can. So yeah. he's, he knows that if he takes two damage on one of his mains, that main is going to be done. Yeah, my guess, the way Jerry just played that, is he's probably just going to take balance back here. Because he yeah. he'll have it with Dash and all the enhancements. And I would hope you would use defense protocol to eliminate Han yeah. here. Yeah, and he drew a card there when I when my gladiator left play with Renegade Squadron mobilization. Yeah. So now he's got a couple cards in hand. <laughs> and I don't have any. I'm trying to figure out where he got the second card from. Maybe he didn't toss everything in edge that turn. Because mm. I won the edge battle, so he shouldn't have drawn one there. Yeah. And I think he only killed one of my ships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, only the one. It's it kind of interesting to yeah. see him use Echo Caverns right at the start there. I would have think he would have uh, waited waited until you did the one strike, and then he can uh, deal with the other unit however right. he wants. Right. So uh, that he just kind of basically showed his hand in advance. Yeah. So he got by it by to, doing it that way. Yeah. So he got it to five there, or that one to five now. Okay. And like I am going to go ahead and kill Han. So he's got a couple cards, but if you can, you Maybe. still got the two, or at least, or no, didn't he double focus the? Uh, yeah, he double gladiator. focused the one gladiator, so it's in okay. the back, and he killed one of them. So, right, I see Z's were in my hand. <laughs> That's not bad. I would think with your ability to pull in a unit, I think you want to try and get rid of Dash this turn while yeah. you can. Well, Z's are all certainly make it a lot easier to do that. Looks like I see Zuckus and I might have Zuckus and Forlom too. That would be amazing. Because then you could get Falcon. Yeah, so I'm going to play Han, and there is Forlom. <laughs> so, At the very least, he'll get the junk dealer out of yeah. there. Yeah. There is Zuckus. Nice. <laughs> You can bounce that Falcon in and out all you want. It ain't going to help in that scenario. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so Forlom's got the one black gun, one black blast, but he has... <laughs> yeah, sorry. He has that <laughs> ability that uh, he can capture something that costs two or less when he focuses the strike, or something that's committed to the force if he's in engagement with Zuckus. <laughs> Yeah, and Zuckus gives you edge two when you're when they attack together, and right. uh, your the first opponent's edge card is face up. Isn't that's it? right. Yeah, that's right too. <laughs> so yeah, that's all kinds of problems for him. Yeah, so it looks like I'm gonna go in after asteroid sanctuary here, with maybe Forlom and Zuckus. <laughs> Makes sense. And I'm not gonna try to pull anybody in with the um, the cruiser. It's a little surprising. Now, can you pull in units that are already focused, like the Falcon, uh, for Now, example? I'm pretty sure it just says you can pull okay. something in the engagement if able. So if they're they're focused, I don't think you can do it. Yeah, it's not like uh, the IG, right. uh, the new IG where you can grab a focus. Right, right, it? right. And I'm throwing the cruiser in too, so I'm going to pull in, looks like Dash, I guess. Okay. Now he's got to decide, does he want to throw the drunk dealer in too? Probably not, so. Well, the thing is, you got enough guns to kill Dash, and you've got the abilities there to take out Falcon. Right, so. 
So yeah, he this... really has to win this edge. And right. you've got edge two, and he's playing with two cards, and one of them's face up. Yep. And I, I know I have, these are in my hand, so I've got one really good edge card right. in there. Now, I do have to worry, does he have another twist? Or No, he played both twists. That's he right. played them both. He yeah, played them so both, he, so he's out of twists. He's out of twists. Uh, he's pitched one Falcon in the edge, so he, right. uh, Han's already in there. He's probably running out of three pip cards as right. well. So the most he could have is six in mm-hmm. his hand right now, in the best-case scenario or worst-case scenario for me. And yeah. I've got two, plus I know I've at least got Zizor, and I don't know what else was in my hand, so... Mm-hmm. I got. I'll probably play it to get to seven to make sure because this looks like it could be a real good turn for me here with this dial at five. That I might be able to kind of completely lock his board down and get rid of Gardner's secret the way this is lining up. Because I got the headhunter, I've got the tie attack squadron. I, you know, I'm going after asteroid sanctuary now. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah. So you had to put the first one face up. So you just had a one. So now I know I only have to worry about beating four. Yeah, well, you don't even have to put a card yet because you yep. still get it too. Yeah, I think he forgot his first one had to be face up, or he just doesn't have very good. So he's. Oh, yep. So I'm going to use out of the mist that one by double, two to one. I, well, I guess I did not have anything still in <laughs> edge battle. Yeah, the the gladiator is a four, isn't he? Yeah. Or is he a three to play? Uh, I think it has to be a scum unit. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't remember what seeding Cantina does, though. I'm, like, drawing a blank on that. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, either. I think it has something to do... Maybe it's blow up an enhancement. That sounds right. That would be awesome to get rid of Echo Caverns. I wonder... Do you have to focus that to use it? I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't think any of the win-by-double... Uh, cards from that set require you to focus them to do yeah, it. I'd have to pull it up. I just don't remember. So it looks like I focused with Zuckus. So I did one damage to Dash. I focused Dash, did one of the objective. So now I'm going to be able to just kill Dash here with the cruiser with those two guns. Right, and you should be able to grab the Falcon also with four Lom. Right, and I focused the Junk Dealer. Yep. Yep, and now when I focus four Lom, I'm going to be able to capture the Falcon. <laughs> Because Forlom can factor an enemy exhausted unit when Zuckus is in the engagement with them. Yeah. So Falcon, I guess, probably put it Admiral's Assault, because that's like the last one he'd want to attack. I yeah, that's think. good. <laughs> that has absolutely no right. purpose to it right now. <laughs> and so I ended up with three damage total on Asteroid Sanctuary. And so now, if I got another fake card here, I can send that TIE Attack Squadron in and completely clear his board. Yeah, and the tie attack also is big enough just to by itself to take out Gardner's secret, yeah. even if you don't. Right. So that's what I'm doing. I'm setting it in. I had a card. There was a like Battle of Endor. <laughs> 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 that's a good cheap fake card to pitch in that wasn't really good, do me much good. And I'll take out the yeah. junk dealer. So it got since it gets targeted, strike in the extra gun with the fake card in the edge stack. Mm-hmm. Well, up Gardner's secret, so now I don't have to worry about. All those enhancements counting towards force struggle. And I've still got two on the force thanks to the deck collector and, uh, <laughs> and the dial. Actually, just thanks to the tie. Actually, the deck collector's focus. That's right. I had to use the deck yeah. collector to do that. The dies, dial's at six now, right? Yeah, the dial's at six. So I guess I could. Well, I could swing with that headhunter if I want to live dangerously. It's going to be. He still needs to blow up all three. This, I might be more willing to risk it here and like throw in the headhunter. <laughs> yeah. Well, it puts three more damage on that objective. Yeah. And then come your turn, uh, you know, dial will be at it, seven. Right. So then you could win by popping those right. last two objectives. Yeah, since the dial went up when I blew up Gardner's Secret. So, yeah, I did it. I swung, put three in there. I'm leaving my lonely little TIE fighter out there in the middle of nowhere, kind of like Figure you the TIE fighter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that TIE fighter doing out there by himself? <laughs> Did he get lost from his convoy or something? <laughs> no, it's a short-range fighter. <laughs> That's right. It's a short-range fighter. He's just sitting there. Is that so, secret weapons he flipped up? I there? think it is secret weapons. So that means you can't, uh, while it's undamaged, your vehicles, smuggler vehicles can't be uh, affected by um, card effects. <laughs> so that eliminates the ability to capture with uh, Forlom. Right, right, or... 
Yeah. Or other shenanigans. <laughs> I actually yeah. ran into that problem at a at a regional. I had Tarkin on the board, and I couldn't blank stuff because of that stupid location. <laughs> <laughs> My opponent started with both of those out at the start of the game, and I was never wow. able to turn them both off. So he played holding all the cards there. <laughs> so I got a couple edge cards now, plus my Zizor that I know I kept <laughs> mm. just in case. So that's a, a good illustration. Well, I mean, I had three pretty good cards. There was Zizor, Zuckus, and Forlom. The Zuckus Forlom is a good thing, but that's a, a good thing to keep in mind that sometimes the most powerful unit you have, like individually, is not necessarily the best thing to put out on the board. So Yeah, it, it just depends on what you can do, how well things synergize together, and what you're trying to do. Zuckus would have been great as a... Defender, of course, with all his tactics and stuff, but you know what? Playing him wouldn't have done anything to your opponent's board. Yeah. And you were right about CD Cantina. I just missed it that I could have discarded one of his enhancements, like Echo Caverns. Yeah, when that I won be that a good decision. I, I think it, it feels like it it happens so infrequently when you're when you've got that set out to like play around the the double icon issue or double the yeah. icons that I just forget what it does. The only time I even think about it, it, double checking for that, is in engagements where I use something like Prince's Scheme. Right. Because then that's the only time you usually can do that. Well, yeah, and I checked out of the mist. I just forgot about CD Cantina, so. Yeah. Getting rid of Echo Caverns would have been really nice there. <laughs> yeah, that card is so hard to deal with. It'd be awesome if you could actually take control of it. <laughs> Ugh. And that then would you be could use it beyond against, brutal. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's a hyperspace marauder. So yeah, from the gamer set. Yeah. Let's pull back the uh, one cost guys. Right. Yeah. But so you got to win force to do that. Right. Right now he could not win. Well, yeah, he could win force just by committing it, right? Because I got rid of Gardner's secret, so. Yeah, you, know, you three got that little tie fighter now. But if that's all he wants to play on his turn, I'm probably not going to be too disappointed. No, you, you're probably easily killing him on your turn then. So, because yeah. again, all you're going to have to do is take out those two objectives. And then there's the stolen ATST that can't be affected by combat icons or anything while it's ready. <laughs> yeah, you got to let it swing and then do stuff to it. Yep. And he's still got a couple resources open, Echo Caverns and the affiliation card, and then Hidden Grove, so he's got another enhancement out, which that lets you, as an action, just put a card there, so you sort of got an extra card, and then you can play it from your hand. <laughs> play it like yeah, it's from, in your hand. It's a creative way of increasing your reserve value, yeah, really. Sure is. So so he's still got three cards. Well, he's got a few cards left. All right, so he is, what is he doing here? I'm guessing he might just be going to force phase. It's well, there's SP. also. Yeah. See, you've also lost because of that stupid secret weapons. You can't pull guys into the combat either with that yeah. other dude. Yeah, that's right. Because so, they're both you... vehicles. So he's going to commit the Marauder, play Make Your Own Luck, it looks like. <laughs> to increase the thing. Yeah, maybe just to get out of his hand. And he's going to be able to pull something back with that. But So I guess he could pull the navigation droid back and get a protector. Mm hmm. That's uh, probably what he's doing. He's got a munitions expert in there I just saw. Yeah, navigation yeah. Where makes sense. So dial is going to go up to seven, so I just need to get a couple more damage in here. Well, one thing you could do is just send something with, uh, basically something with a blast to take, uh, to turn off secret objective, really. Oh, he just played, is that, what is that card called, one last trick or something? <laughs> What does that do? Or No, it's the thing from Beyond the Rim that, um, I don't think that's what it's called. I think I'm th thinking the wrong name. It's the card that lets you focus two smugglers units if it's during the force phase, and then everything that is, um, then, oh, yeah. then everything, everything that's, that's exhausted, exhausted shuffled shuffles in back in. Deck. Yeah. Well, that changes things. Yeah, so he's still got the Marauder, and I got the TIE Fighter. Boy, am I glad I have these are in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is not one last last ditch maneuver is what it's called one last trick is in that right the other set so yeah so you can play it during the force phase you focus two smuggler units to shuffle all exhausted units back into their owner's deck so that affected both of us but 
certainly hurt yeah. me a lot more than him. Yeah, and it's specifically not only is it force phase, but it's your force phase. Right, so you right. Have to, you can't like do it on your opponent's force phase and then uh, be the first one to play units. So right. it, so, it, it really is a last. Uh, right, a last you, ditch thing. You, yeah, you don't want to do it if you don't have to. It's it's like a poor man's. Um, there is no escape for that original like card of the empire set where <laughs> yeah. that one you could do on either right either side and it, it buries everything. <laughs> yeah, you always try and do it on your opponent's turn right. if you can. Right. Yeah, if you have to do it on your turn, a lot of times that's not a good sign. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Now, I might be able to win here. I know I have Zizor. He... As long, yeah, as long as Zizor can attack and do enough damage and focus the Marauder, the TIE Fighter could take out the other thing. Right. Well, I think if I just have one more Black Blast, that's all I'd need. Well, you only have one attacker. you got to get two objectives. Right, but if I have Zizor and one other blast is what I meant. Oh, I, yeah. So what he's doing here is we're figuring out how many units I just buried because he gets to draw a card for each one with Renegade Slash <laughs> of Mobilization. <laughs> so he's okay. going to actually win Edge probably yeah, no matter edge what I do. It's not going to be a good thing this turn for you. <laughs> but that's why I said with, with Zizor, I think if I can just get Zizor out one other blast, he uh, focused Echo's Cavern, so I can send Zizor in after secret weapons and lock down the Marauder. There's nothing he can do, and then the TIE Fighter and something else with a blast could take out the yeah. last two. And I think I see Zuckus or something in my hand. So do I have enough to play all those? Yeah, I should. Uh, two, four, five. You have nine yeah, resources. So, and right I've now. got two smuggler ones. That's the critical thing. Yeah. So... So I think I should be able to win here, assuming I don't screw up. There's Zizor. Paying five for him. <laughs> yeah. And then a Gladiator. Oh, that works, too. <laughs> yeah, because he's got tactics, too. Right. So, yes, I have a couple different ways I can obviously... Oh, wait. <laughs> I threw a damage on there instead. Okay, I'm going to play the Headhunter <laughs> instead. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, it's Maybe even... I'm worried he's got some shenanigans for some reason. I don't know what they'd be, but... Yeah, well, he's got no resources either. Yeah, so he doesn't have any resources. So I don't know what that could be, but... So I think I should be able to do it, because I can... said so these are after secret weapons, force him to defend, and then the Headhunter and the TIE Fighter will take the other things out. Yeah. Now it looks like I'm huh. swinging with Zizor and the Headhunter at... Oh, at Renegade yeah, Squad. Yeah. yeah, that'll work too, because even if he blocks, I'll get enough there. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't just block with Zizor being in with... It's a good thing he doesn't have seeds in his deck. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so I don't know if... Does he think he can do anything, or is he just going to call it here? Yeah, I don't see. I don't know what he could possibly have that would uh, save him here. Yeah, me neither. I mean, there is. I mean, I can think of a couple cards. I can think of cards, but but not ones that are in his deck. Right, and nothing that he could play for free. Yeah. Huh. So maybe he's just deciding can he do anything or is he just going to scoop here? Yeah, unless he's got some way to give that Marauder a tactics or enough damage. Like, it would have to have four guns to be able to Yeah, kill if he some. had a Seeds, if he had two Heats, he could win Edge and take out one of the things. Yeah. Which is probably why I shouldn't have attacked like I did. I <laughs> should have just sent Zizor in. I can't imagine there's anything to do, but he's he didn't scoop yet, so that's got me a little nervous here. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he scoop yet? Yeah, I can't think of what what could be in his deck. Yeah, there's nothing I can think of that would do it. Right, nothing that's free. I think that's the key. Yeah. He has no resources open. 
No. He's got all those cards. Maybe he's just trying to look at them all. He's got too many. He can't figure out what he has. <laughs> yeah, he's got a fair amount of new new stuff from that one set. So Yeah. Although a lot of it is already on the table. <laughs> right. So this is interesting. I'm probably at this point I'm probably pretty nervous that he hasn't just said, okay. Or he didn't decide <laughs> what to do. I mean he sort of would have to defend. I mean there's nothing he could do otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, all right, so I think he was conceding there, finally. Okay. Probably seeing what I had. So I had about seven, eight icons. He probably had more than that. He's got so many cards. So I don't know yeah. how many cards got buried. So, yeah, so I just tactics the Marauder down there. I can send the, the lonely TIE Fighter to, for the win. <laughs> TIE Fighter's sitting on the floor since turn one and finally takes it out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was an interesting game there, Derek. So uh, you got any thoughts about that one? That I said that... That deck that uh, Trip and Rocket built, it worked better than I thought it might, based on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it. it wasn't like uh, it had, you know, it's not like your Sith where you get a whole bunch of main units out there. It was uh, just a lot of efficient uh, guys like the Gladiators and and whatnot uh, doing stuff for you. Uh, you had Defense Protocol out the whole game. I, I think right. you used it once. Yeah. Um, and so you, you really didn't do anything with your objectives. It was just all the units that you got out and, and being able to use them the, the way that you did. Being yeah. able to pull in with that one guy, having him uh, from the get-go was a big plus. Yep. Yeah, it sure was. So, yeah, I think when I, I, was, when I was playing it, I kind of got a feel for what was going on. Now, it's been a couple of weeks, I think, since Jerry and I played that particular game. But the thing I remember thinking as I was going through it, like, what on earth am I supposed to be doing? Well, I started noticing there was all kinds of things that like were just to mess with edge battles and stuff. There was mm -hmm. sort of that common theme between most of the sets. And it had quite a few fake cards, which helped with uh, TIE Attack Squadron, too. Um, so I think I, I could finally see sort of the common theme, I guess, that maybe uh, Trip and Rocket was going for. Although when I put the game up, he can chime in and say if, that was what his was his intent was or not. <laughs> so well, there's also a couple things you didn't see from the defense protocol set is the the death from above to where right because you had all those extra vehicles right that you right. could get an extra blast or the talon roll can work on the headhunter so right. it can double strike and right. theoretically blow up something all by itself. Yeah, so it had some synergy there too. Like I said, I think I noticed just like you got the edge bonuses with. Um, with Zuckus, if he's out and things, and you got Prince's scheme, so you can mess with stuff with Zizor and the those things. And then certainly if you get Piet out and you get him loaded up with fake cards, well, it's going to be awfully hard for them to win any edge battles on defense. And uh, so mm -hmm. I said it seemed like there was a lot of that kind of – and the Gladiators, obviously, with the edge manipulation stuff too. So yeah. there was a lot of that kind of common theme. But um, but it was kind of a fun deck to play. It was definitely an interesting matchup there against all that smuggler stuff, and mm -hmm. good to get rid of that gardener seeker. That's a pretty good objective if you're building around it. <laughs> so yeah, well, all right, I've, I've had fun with it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I guess we should wrap this one up for now. And uh, thanks again for joining me for commentary as always, Derek. Always fun. Do it again. Yep. <laughs>